And there was, you know what, I'm not going to say that. you gotta, you got to clip this because this is the only time in my life that I'm ever going to say this. Okay. I saw something funny on Reddit today. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what I saw was somebody was like, Skies and Canadian dropping 20 kills combined with a combined age of 85. And I was like, that is absolutely <laughs> correct. Yeah, is, they, are both, they are both in their 40s, and yet they yep. still are leading the way for Dark Zero. Either way, oh my God. the roster moves that were made by both Mirage and Space Station have seemingly rejuvenated these squads. At the top of your screen, what you see as the standings is a bit misleading, because yes, both teams are technically 2-1, and one, but Space Station is actually 1-1-1. One, one, and O one, whereas Mirage is two O O and one, which means that Mirage has won both of their matches in regulation, and therefore Dark Zero, Astralis, and OXG qualify for the Six Invitational is virtually guaranteed. Even if they finish dead last in North America, which only one of those four teams can do, True. they are still guaranteed a ninety-nine point nine percent chance of making it to the Six Invitational. Fighting for the remainder of these spots, the Sonics are on the outside looking in. They have a very high likelihood of making it. If they have a strong finish in this stage, they should accrue enough points to finish in the top 16 globally. What about the former world champions from a couple years back in Space Station? Well, not such a good odd. They currently sit tied in 32nd overall and are miles away from making it. Is it possible that they make it just based on points alone? Yeah, of course. I mean, it, they have better odds than TSM and almost all the rest of the NAL that aren't here. If SSG make it to the major and place well in the major, suddenly they're in an excellent spot to make it to SI, but again, would rely on other teams performing poorly. Yeah. But your focus right now is finishing well in the NAL and then getting to the major itself. With the way that TSM has been playing and the way that Dark Zero has been playing so far, it's entirely possible that both of these teams make it, especially the Sonics, who despite having a disappointing day today, still look like a very, very tough foe. Either way, let's get into action here as our diatribe is finished, all the teams are in, and it's a very first defense down in the basement. Yeah, it's step by step to your bar. Not the basement bar. There it is. I, I did what you did. You did what I I called first floor basement. You called first floor basement. It happens that. to the no, of us. I didn't mean to do that. I make fun of you so much for it. Bar is anyway. a deep bomb side. <laughs> first minute burn to your operator bands went out. It was Mirage target banning the Ying. That is a classic against SSG that most NL teams do. Then the Mirror was SSG that target banned the Nook on this map of Chalet to get the information of operator of Valkyrie. A trade happens. Yeti onto Melton and Kento onto Yeti. So obviously favors nobody. But Rampy finds another one for the board of SSG. It's a 4v3. They're very quick to take map control. We saw this from Space Station yesterday. They were very hungry in their match, as were Mirage. Let's not discredit them, but it was uh, the SSG Parabellum game yesterday where Space Station seemed to commit very few mistakes, and it was a almost a new look. And again, this goes back to what we talked about with every single team that's made a roster change, is that there's an acclimation that needs to happen mm. when a player joins your squad. In this case, Space Station getting Yeti, a very different player from Skies, so there's gonna be just a bit of an adjustment. There's a kill from Space Station, but two answer back from Mirage. Oh, oh and Kento goes huge! The players from Space Station just trickle on in, and now Rampy will need to clutch. What? Skeleton key out, it's good enough to kill Kento, and it's Dexter, the former player, albeit briefly, of Space Station. Left against Rampy, he swings! And Dexter will have his revenge. First round goes in favor of Mirage. That's gonna feel so good for a player like Dexter who's new to the scene, taking on a veteran like Ramp in a 1v1, the opening round of Chalet here on play day four. And I will say Rampy absolutely nasty kill with the box skeleton key because I did not think that was going to work as well as it did. But Mirage, they come out swinging. Kenzo getting both kills. It, by the way, mid reload is absolutely illegal. That should never happen against the <laughs> F2, but it did. Look at this. Boom! First shot, one tap basically from that skeleton key. Beautiful first round here, an explosive one at that. Might be a quick re-host. I believe a member of Mel of Mirage named Melted had a camera bug. I believe that's a hot related thing where sometimes you cannot see what camera that you are on, and that of course is a competitive integrity issue because somebody's gonna ask, hold camera number four, and you go, I, I can't see the numbers. It's like, what, what does it look like? And it's just, that's not fun to play with. We're gonna do a quick rehost and we're we'll right back into it. But uh, as I always say, the players are oh so kind and sweet and they get 
really quickly back into the lobby because we are actually flying right back into round number two. Started in bar, next up we will go to the kitchen bomb site. A quick one while well, we're away and on over to kitchen. It'll be interesting to see what the teams trot out as this tertiary bomb site because the pick rate, I feel like, of bar has actually decreased a fair bit in favor of that the proper basement bomb site. The proper Downstairs and garage. Okay. Or if you're from Western Canada, the garage. The garage. I'm surprised we haven't heard Jesse say that yet, as he is a Western Canadian. I mean, Jesse, I feel like he's just too nice. Like, he wouldn't correct someone or be like, force He has an accent. That's not, okay. that's not his words. Okay. That's a good old boy Canadian accent. Good old boy. Uh, and then upstairs to master bedroom. Now, given that this is a kitchen defense, teams might forego defending that top floor, but they're still going to defend it all the same. You're going to see quite a heavy investment from the defenders towards office. Maybe somebody over by library, maybe somebody playing by chimney, maybe even one over by bathroom. Because when you're attacking this kitchen bomb site, teams are going to want to try to take control of trophy and then move in from there. And in order to get a good foothold in trophy, you need to take control of the stairs that lead up to the bathroom and then solarium up at the top, which is exactly where Space Station is starting things off. Typically with this kind of attack, the most difficult aspect is going to be the first minute and a half. You know, getting the initial foothold in towards the building as an attacker. Once you're in, you're doing pretty damn good. But in the initial intro right here, you see crossfire from you know the closet master bedroom, solarium stairs, and of course the bathroom itself where Frost is being melted. If SSG can find the opening and get one of those three kills, then they can then progress in throughout the windows, and that's gonna mean that now map control has been established. But unless you know, Mirage swings them and loses a gunfight. It can be difficult to, you know, force them out of these positions, especially because the grenade economy is so scarce right now. Only two grenades on most attacking rounds when the Nook Band is on the table. That's going to be Rampy on that sledge. Dex with a safe peek there, applies some pressure, but doesn't go for the swing. Well, still no damage that's been done here. Mirage were not the strongest to start off the round, but they recovered quite well, and Kento goes for the run out. Well played, Fultz! Picks up three very quickly, but he can't secure the third just yet. It's so close, but Melted will bleed out right now. Benji takes down Rampy, and now Bosco falls. Benji as well. The individual heroics that we've already witnessed are unbelievable up to this point, Nick. Benji picks up three from his spot. Melted still bleeding out. Suddenly, the advantage from Space Station is gone. Mo taking out his teammate, but again, another hero play comes really? out. Benji and Mo playing close together in this one versus two. They got the briefcase in South Solarium. Honeycomb might have the side, but he doesn't care about it at all because he can't do anything with that information. Force has been. Might be in a rescuable position. He's climbed off the edge of the rooftop, but Benji, if he hears jump the out. sound, you could jump, jump out. out. Jump out, jump out, do it, Benji, Benji, oh. do it. Don't think, just do it. Oh. Oh, and he looks away as well at the last coward. second. You coward, we wanted this from you. 30 seconds, diffuser case upstairs still. Hot and cold can find the kill, but needs the case as well. Mirage pink split, one above, one below. And east is where they are right now. Activating glance. Down from the shotgun from Mo. Hot and cold, no more. Fultz on a tiny bit of HP. Right now oh. inside of West Main. Fultz just moving around. He'll see the smoke, but Mo has so much faith in the shotgun. What the hell is this match so far? Mirage up 2 nothing. I mean, we said in the beginning, this might have the potential to be the match of the day. And it's Mirage SSG, which in stage one and stage two, we would have never thought that. And as you see, they found the openings and that made their lives so much easier. Fultz 3K. Got one kill, Claymore jump out, you know, second kill to follow up on the injure, but then Benji just shows up. Mo shows up, and then they played so disciplined in the two versus one. They figure out, okay, hot and cold's rotating for that revive. We're not gonna jump out and risk it, even though that's disappointing gameplay for you, Parker. But they played it disciplined in the smart way, right? They established the crossfire multiple times, and they put themselves in a position where if one person were to fall, the second person can follow it up. And it's so important because Benji was so low on HP, and towards that very end, so was Mo. A single bullet on either of those members and they're either injured or out for the entirety of that round. Mirage are leading 2-0, starting at the fence and chalet against Space Station, Sta Space Station Gaming here in Stage 3. Played it 4. We are now round number 3, and we are now going to the basement for the first time in this particular matchup. Aruni Gates being brought, Kai Claus as well. Various versions of Deny. Mirage, they have a strong... Oh? 
Stronghold down below with both the finisher sentence. Jaeger will mind. Uh -oh. That's another spawn peak, but it goes the other way around. Yeti reads it, sees it, and takes out Kento. And Jaguar can find all those roaming positions from apparently outside the map even. Well, this is a wine garage defense down below. Mirage roaming on the main floor. Unsure if there's anybody above. Yes, there is. Melted playing inside a library. Again, a very common spot here. Pop the hatch, you can drop on down. Coordinated effort from Space Station to break free into office, and there they go. Melted will hear the call and try to answer Ooh. forward, but the bullets will whiz right by him through the wall. Can't give too much. Instead, playing around that door frame and falling off, ultimately, back towards library as the drones from Space Station try to pin him down. It's a fine balance right now. It's a bit of a dance here. It's a line in the middle where SSG, they have control. And right now, Mirage, they want to see if they can cross that line or not. Aggression from Mohesi on the window. Does not do any damage, however. And Dex with a good read on the rappel here on Solarium stairs, but it's a passive hold from SSG so far, just focusing on library right now. I try to isolate the players who are off-site. They know that they've got the Jaeger oh. trapped in the corner, but this could be a one gunfight. The thing is that Rampy's not peeking it. Grenade goes off, but it doesn't seem to do any damage to Melted. Ooh. This one just might. Lots of damage, but not enough. The hop in from Fultz is good. Rampy doubles up, not before Mirage gets two of their own. The action coming fast and furious right now. And fittingly enough, the car reference, they then have to go down to the garage in order to pull off a successful plant. That did you indeed. <laughs> um. You like that one? I like that one, yeah, I did. <laughs> Dexter, of course, staying aggressive here on the staircase on the sense that the bomb set itself might not be the strongest position right now. The thing is, it kind of might be. Benji is still downstairs, but if the wall gets opened up to the outside exterior of the map, that could be trouble. Sephora so comes out, doesn't do a single point of damage. So Dexter, he has to try and find something here. Otherwise, Benji might be left stranded on the bomb site all alone because this wall is about to get blown up. There goes the exothermic charge down. 40 seconds to go. This is where we usually see the execute go forward. Dexter still roaming on that main floor. Does he know if there's anybody above him? Because Mirage are outnumbered. You have to go for a swing, try to equalize and get back, but Dexter might actually be retaking here. What is he He's going, going above? Who is he going to try to fight? That is the real question. Dexter is so far out of the action that he had a lot of faith in Benji, but now Benji's gone. Dexter will have to come back towards the bomb site. He was upstairs, I, I assume, thinking that somebody was up there but he would have been wrong. Bosco with Diffuser getting down, they ping it. They know exactly where he is, but Dexter runs right past Fultz. And I'm not sure what Dexter was doing. I don't know if he got bad intel or not, but it's a confusing end of the round for Mirage. And SSG get on the board. My thinking is that maybe he was expecting SSG to plan default on that trash can area, and then he could like use the verticality inside a fireplace to deny the planter, but Benji is going to be alone on the bomb side, and you're going to be quite far away from him, and once you kill the planter, they know exactly where you are. I feel like walking back towards the bombs are there, walking down the blue stairs, maybe flanking fireplace earlier on could have helped Benji hold on for a bit longer, but all those walls being soft near him. He had three enemies to fight from three different angles, and he found one kill, good for him, but then you gotta play retake without any real information on the bomb side itself. That is difficult to do. And SSG, they prevail. They get the round. 2 1 still in favor of Mirage. Back to bar where things started off explosively in round number one. And some operators right now are being hovered from SSG that are a bit different. Uh, Yeti going from Dokkipi onto Gridlock, an operator that we don't see quite often. And Hot and Cold go from Twitch to Capital. This could mean a direct library attack with the Capital Fire. It's going to clear those corners. Four grenades being brought out as well from SSG. This definitely is a heavy utility oriented attack. But of course, that doesn't mean you can only do one kind of attack. You've got options on the table. A spawn peak coming out. Dexter, he's not going to swing that after that pre fire comes out. They had critical information. They had indeed. They didn't lack it. They had it this time around. Dexter had to fall off of the spawn peak lest he lose his head. And a wise move that is. Accompany the rest of the team and then trudge on forward. Space Station, as they get into the building, they'll do so quite fast. The entry point is down by the snowmobile garage. There's a late setup from a frost mat over on blue stairs. It'll be sat on top of by Mohesi. The bomb site back to bar on the main floor. So we are seeing the same rotation between sites. Nick, bar twice, kitchen will likely follow up, and then that wine garage bomb site. Of course, the major question becomes 
Mirage can go back to a certain bomb site if they don't win it. And that was that wine garage. They could have attempted this bomb site for a second time in a row. They thought better than that. Slow round so far. No one really taking any direct confrontation. This is Cheetah had step number one to take care of. That was the breach downstairs. But now the flank gets hurt and seen and denied from Fultz. It's Dexter impact to the hatch. And this is also why opening hatches, you know, in the prep phase is beneficial for your secondary shotguns or Rooney. Because if you impact in the middle of the round, the sound cue just gives away your intention. And that might just be the entire difference maker. Now, it is going to be a library-oriented attack with a capital fire and grenades, which makes a lot of sense. But they got that bar wall opened up from the basement stairs earlier, so nobody can play stuck and hold the double window jump in. That might enable SSG the aggression that they need, but Kento shuts down Rambi before that execute can come out successfully. Rampy having a bounce back game after not exactly being the most potent force yesterday, but still showing up big. It was Bosco who had a, almost a career game that we've seen in the NAL for him. It was reminiscent Massive. of the old Bosco that we saw before. I like the Azami that's being brought right now. We haven't really seen much Azami today. Well, because she's mostly been banned, but available now and being used quite extensively upstairs. The explosives from Space Station will need to be put to good use. Only problem is, is what do they have? They have a single grenade from Fultz. That's really it right now. As Sledge and the grenades perished earlier on. Diffuser getting planted by Bosco. Tempting Kento to try to engage. Oh. He wins! And so does Melted with one of his own. SSG loses all but Yeti in that ensuing fray. The coverage was fine, but Mirage just simply outgunned them and overpowered them in those duels. Yeti has two targets, Damn. up or down. He looks up but it's Mohassi who drags him down. Mirage take round number four. Their lead goes back to two rounds. This is like such a fever dream because we're saying Mirage are out gunning SSG one for one. Mirage are out clutching SSG one for one right now on Chalet. And that is not something that I thought I would ever get to experience given the nature of the organizations in the last like 12 months basically or nine months at least. And it's going to force out a tactical timeout from Space Station. They gotta figure out what the next moves are because nothing's really working for them right now. SSG, they tend to take a tactical timeout when they are behind, as most teams do. But when SSG are in the lead comfortably, they just ride it out. They really don't want to give the enemy team any breathing room. But right now, they're the ones who need it. So they'll pull the plug. Both teams can talk to their coach and with each other, which means that no one gets any unfair advantages. We've still got two more rounds to go before the side swap. It's 3-1 for Mirage currently. I've seen a lot of early timeouts being taken here, whereas I feel like on LAN, when we're at majors, mm. they tend to have those timeouts be brought out when the match is on the line or very close to in the second half of the game. And the one thing that we always do talk about when, in regards to timeouts is that by burning your timeout in the first half, you don't have any protection in the second half. So either you think things are real dire or you're reasonably comfortable if you're Space Station that the defense will be far more favorable to you and that maybe Mirage will fall off a little bit. Again, it's almost impossible for us to sit here and give any kind of valid perspective because we just were not in the team's comms right now. We don't know exactly what's going on and I don't want to speak like we're experts because there's so much that Lycan could have used that timeout for. Yeah, I mean, every coach and every team will, you know, go about a technical timeout differently. Some teams will do it as a mental thing where it's like, oh guys, we're tilting, let's get back to the game. Some is strategical, some is about just like telling a player like, yo, like you gotta fix this thing. So it really is a, every team has their own approach and needs and uses for these technical timeouts and when do you want to take them. SSG, they've kept things. Relatively similar when it comes to operator lineup. Of course, Hot and Gold on the line right now gets those secondary EMPs and a gadget that can help clear out some roamers or at least make them stand still for when you want to try and clear out those roamers. Mirage are keeping the aggression up. Dexter going for spawn peaks almost every single round, punching windows, shooting them, running out the map, rotating, and really keeping SSG guessing as to where he's going to be playing next. And it's been usually the first minute is a very slow one for space. They set up, they get their drones, and if they have like an early step they want to deal with, like they open up a ton of different windows, they apply all this like phantom pressure, they're cutting the rotates right now. Rambi misses the feet of the member of Mirage, so they get out the full HP. But about 30 seconds from now, that's normally when SSG get really aggressive and it gets really explosive, and that's what defines most of these rounds so far, is that mini execute on the roam clear. See, Dexter's gonna make a road to Dexter, that's a, that's a little bit far, uh, there, buddy. <laughs> that's not gonna. <laughs> not, work. not quite the, uh, not quite the distance that you'd hoped for. <laughs> 
The first couple rounds that we witnessed on Chalet were all a breakneck speed, and things have slowed down, slowed down considerably over the last two rounds for good reason, and that's because of the fact that, well, SSG takes a timeout. If they don't feel comfortable in being quick to entry, and Mirage is winning a lot of those opening duels, despite the fact that Space Station has every first blood so far, except for, I guess, round number one, which was a trade. Correct. Settle down and then make sure that when you entry, it's not the type of style that SSG was playing oh. before. And I mean, Rampy tries it. He gets cute with the window. And Dexter cuts him down to size. This is personal for Dexter. And now they're more in the hunt. The Zofia so close by. Dexter hears it. There's one. There's two. And a third will come in as well. As the Yana has been down, but Dexter cannot capitalize just yet. Foltz will continue to bleed out. Hot and cold in danger. Dexter cannot get the third before Bosco ends him. It's Bosco finished off by Melted in the secondary. Hot and cold cannot retrieve Foltz, so he has to take all of the matters into his own hands. And it's Benji Mula with the last two kills, the first half. It's Mirage's. 4-1, still one round for Space Station to keep it close. It's a really good hold for Mirage because they're all so committed to the same objective right now. And I think that's the big difference maker for a lot of teams right now is some teams who look disjointed. We saw Sonics earlier play on bank. They're trying to roam clear and they're just falling apart individually. One versus ones, no trades. It seems like one person's playing aggressive. One person's kind of playing passive. And there's a third guy in, the, in between. It, this is Mirage with four members just slamming their head against the wall all together in union and breaking that wall with a single member holding down the bomb side to make sure that if SG want to get cute and rush it, well, he's there to stop it as well. They're really covering all the entry points. The roam game is working out fantastically. SSG, most importantly, they're not winning their opening duels right now. We see Rambi a couple of rounds now take that confrontation early on. And he will get out dueled by Dexter for the third time in five rounds. And then SSG plays four versus five. They're missing the window pressure. And all of a sudden, they just don't have enough manpower alive to match the four members of Mirage. So the opening gun duels really do make a lot of impact right now in Chile. Sa uh, last round of the half, round number six. Mirage, they're just gonna keep doing the same old thing that keeps working because why change it up right now? Same rotational being made, same bumps at rotation. Bar, kitchen, basement, bar, kitchen, basement again. Last time was close, came down to 1v2. Benji and Dexter were fighting for their life. It was SSG that prevailed. So you got the plant down with good cover. Is one of those pocket EMPs that go off. That actually, no, that's a real deal. Never mind. Real oh, EMP. It's so uncommon for us to see a Thatcher that it kind of threw me for a loop. Hot and cold, not having the strongest game so far. More cold than hot. One and five, but on utility, he and Bosco were the superstars of SSG in yesterday's matchup. They have not exactly materialized the way that I. Uh, I think that SSG has hoped. Instead, Fultz is leading the charge. Seven and four on him this, on this Iana. This is eerie. Yeah, it's a. Uh, this is eerie. Do you, want, do you want to make the noises? The drones? <laughs> drones don't make that noise. I don't know what noise they make. They're robots. I'm a human. You've literally droned before, Nick. You know oh, exactly what they sound like. It's like. Pew, pew, when it is like almost like a high pitched noise. It's like noise. a high pitched like noise. Neither Kento nor Fultz are particularly near one another. Fultz is covering the back of the map with Hot and Cold not too far away. There's a ping outside, presumably from one of those Alibi clones. Dexter lighting one up. Oh, oh they capitalized. He can turn around and he sees the buck limited HP. Can the Bailiff do anything? No, he gets caught out by Fultz. A huge play from Space Station to start off the slaughter. It's a great There's one. A hidden hand now too. Can it connect over oh. towards Mohesi? But no, this double ADS setup that we see on the wine wall, a lot of teams run this. They had to have known about it. Mohesi will now relocate with a minute to go, and it's a standstill with Mirage at a disadvantage, but Fultz is a single bullet away from death. We've seen time and time again that teams can do a lot of damage with a player who is basically a ghost. Fultz still very much alive. Bosco now using both exothermic charges to open up the walls, leading into the back of Wine. Both of them should have no problem going off. Benji circling over towards Garage. That's where we see Yeti oh. of Ace, and he gets Mohesi, but looks the wrong way. Benji, an easy cleanup on that kill. Now Benji repositions over towards Connector. 
Walking all the way down, but he's checking to the right where they're gonna be swinging from the left. And he just whiffs his shots. They know Melton is playing inside oh. of Blue. A nice shot on the Fultz. Melton could have another, but they're being distracted while Bosco is getting the diffuser planted. Rampy holding off right now. This is the hope for SSG, leaving Melton to clutch out in a 1v2. Space Station searching for their no. second round. Melton, an Melton. incredible play. How does he do it? Good Lord. Clutching out for Mirage. And they'll take the first half 5-1 against Space Station. Now, this is absolutely absurd. No one gets to play like this against Space Station game when the clutch team themselves. These rounds are being absolutely stolen from them. They had the discipline, the 1v2, the crossfire was established, they swung together, and they still somehow lost to Melded with that beautiful, basically a one-tap at the end with an incredibly fast flick to that second member. Mirage, they are stealing the show and they are disappointing a lot of Space Station gaming fans right now, I think. But the side swap comes out. Round number seven. This is where things can change very drastically. Not only are Mirage in a position where they might just beat SSG, there might be some nerves involved. They're almost, they can taste the victory, right? They're so close. And also, now they need to be the ones sol solving problems rather than creating them. Because the game of Rainbow Six Siege comes down to defenders, you need to make it difficult for attackers to figure out what to do. Now, well, as you see, they are incredibly strong at putting up a strong hold with good crossfires and a good read for the game strategically. Mirage as a new team have to try and figure out exactly how to break those defensive holds, win their gunfights, and set up the cover for a potential plant later on. It's a lot to deal with. Aubrey to line up, I like what they're doing. Benji bringing out the zero to ground some information here, trying to help with that map control, cover the flanks, etc. They got verticality on both Dexter and Melted, Buck and Sledge, and they have four grenades. I'm a huge fan when teams play four grenades because you need more than two in most cases. See what they can do. We're starting on bar, SCG defense, Mirage attack, 5 1 favor of Mirage so far. Well, oh. <laughs> This is a thrilling matchup, and I mean, it's thrilling for very different reasons. It's not as competitive as I think either you or I had hoped. And if we go back and we look at the first half here, what happened? Mirage didn't have a single first blood, at least by my count. No, They, they might have had it in round five, but they were all trades or space station. <sighs> yet Mirage still won. They were at a disadvantage so frequently, and yet they stuck through with it, and that is... I mean, that's superb. This is a very different Mirage team. And in a lot of ways, being captained by Mohesi, it's really brought out a lot of the potential that the other players Absolutely. had. You know, it, was, it wasn't too long ago that people were talking about how both Benji and Melted were on Fraud Watch. Yeah. They're playing, <laughs> they might not be playing like superstars, but they are certainly playing like far better players now that there's a structure and a system that has seemingly put it, been put in place in Mirage. And, We've been doing exit interviews for a lot of these teams. And the general consensus is when you ask a pro player, what team is the most surprising so far at the stage? All of them have said Mirage. Yeah, I mean, and that, that itself is no surprise because they were one of the weakest, if not the weakest looking team in stage one and stage two. People thought a small roster change of two members, it can't change that much because the core itself looks so weak, but they're really bringing out the best in each other right now, playing on the same page. But now, on their attacking side, time is ticking down. One minute and 10 seconds to go. They force the top loop position away, that is Yeti, but they haven't started working on that library hold yet. So the gunfights have to start beginning, and they gotta go in their favor. Kenzo starts it off in the right way. Oh my goodness, and looking through those Kiba barriers, you can't really do all that much. Hot and cold, the single kill for Space Station so far. Mirage had softened up Yeti earlier. There wasn't a lot left for them to finish off when push did come to shove. And the Kiba barriers slowly being chipped away at and removed. Rampy down for the count. Benji on zero, putting in the work needed for the team. It's now up to Hot and Cold and Bosco. Three kills combined for the two of them. That's a grave situation to find themselves in. Not ideal. Smoke goes out. Seems to chase away Mirage, but for a moment. Final 30 seconds for SSG to hang on at this point. Bosco's now down for the count. Hot oh. Cold sees the sledge. This is so ugly. Hot Good Lord. It's grotesque. Mirage take the round off of some of the worst gunplay from Hot and Cold in this match. And now it's 6-1. Sometimes you hit your shots, and then sometimes your enemy simply just misses. And that was one of the scenarios because Hot and Cold seemingly had a free kill, but couldn't quite get the shots hit to finish off the member. 
That was Dexter. He's down to one HP towards the very end there, but a lot of shots were hitting the wall right next to him, unfortunately. It's 6-1 now. And Mirage, again, they're hitting all their objectives. The shield clear, the ADS clear, the timing between flashbang and grenades, and it sounds so silly and so simple to say this, but it is easy to mess up the timing when you throw the flashbangs and you throw the grenades in quick succession without getting swung, dying, or uh, unnecessarily exposing yourself to a line of sight from the enemy. They did a really great job of staying alive until all those things were taken care of, and then they did a 3-2-1 countdown. Drone went in, you know, entrying was successful, their traits were there, then they just slowed down again. They re-droned everything, nades were tossed out, they got a kill, all of a sudden, it was a 1v3. Kitchen is next. This could be the final round, and you said earlier, Parker, that this hasn't been the most competitive match to what we expected, and yeah, it's 6-1. But there's basically three rounds for Mirage that he's completely stole the show. That should have been SSGs. That means that we're being in a much more close position, round score-wise at least. So do not let this 6-1 scoreline be an illusion. It has been competitive. It has been close in its own way. And as you see, they're still looking to try and find one more round on the board here. Well, yeah, this is the problem with using your timeout so early on, right? They take, they take their time out, and now what happens? Think they're in, they're in trouble, and there's nothing they can do to fix it. If Mirage prevails here, guess what happens? They sit in first place, tied with TSM <laughs> and Sonics. Now, with the round differential being the way it is, they might end up taking second, but I just do not see them catching TSM. TSM right now is actually a pretty nice round differential of plus 11. First kill, by the way, went to SSG, taking out Mohesi. That's the Thermite down, and no follow-up. Hard Breach is a bit of a problem for Mirage, but they've got more than enough room on the runway to still land this thing if they so choose because SSG's only mustered a single round. Kento walks in, doesn't look at his cross. Yeti at the top of library stairs punishes him for that. SSG with an advantage now. That to do, and it's a nice cross hold from SSG. I mean, Hot and Cold had so much faith in Yeti. They didn't even flinch when the jump in happened or the Dying Scan came out either. And now Mirage, this is probably the least favorable position they've been in so far in this entire matchup, essentially, besides those clutch moments in the 1v2s, because they're down a member, they have little map control, and Space Station, they've killed their only hot breach. They need to now work their way through the map, but somehow Dexter finds another kill on the round, seemingly out of nowhere, onto Hot and Cold that was playing that top chimney position. But now, SSG, they will falter. They go backwards towards the master bedroom, towards the bathroom itself. They're going to establish another crossfire position between Rampy and Bosco. Last member, of course, playing on the bomb side itself, can hold down the fortress below. And because there's no hard breach from Mirage, they don't really have any easy ways in throughout, uh, through fireplace. Decisions to be made. Do you go above and contest the roamers? Do some verticality with 40 seconds left? Do you just run in dining hall and pray you can get into the bump side? Well, we're gonna go above. Lion scan comes out, and here we go. Let me get some marks out of it too. Chasing them down those solarium stairs, back down into trophy. Rampy's able to reposition himself, find a new home, and well, he's gonna lose a lot of the ceiling above him as Melted goes to work, and the backup plan is for Dexter to do the same thing. Bosco guns down Dexter, though, so there is no backup plan any longer. Mirage losing one of their soft destructors and their highest rated player at the moment with 12 kills. Bosco through the hatch takes out Melted. And I guess go upstairs was the game plan for Mirage, but it did not clearly work. Now it's Benji to take a lot of damage. And whether he dies or lives, the clock is going to end a potential for Mirage to put this one away. Way. The comeback for Space Station might have just begun. It might have just begun, but it's going to be a long road ahead of you, and no mistakes can really be made. And even though that round looked so convincing from Space Station in the first minute and a half, it still came down to be a close round. I think if Mo was alive on that Thermite, uh, instead of you know someone else had died early on, that could be in a, such a different scenario because the dining wall gets opened up, you have top floor control, you can start establishing the plant down, and then the cover can come out from the attackers from far away with those zoom scopes against members of SSG who only has the 1.0 scopes available to themselves. There is going to be a quick rehost here, and this is an unfortunate timing for Mirage because momentum, of course, We've been talking a little bit, but by and large, the team has been listening. Absolutely. How important 
leadership can be for your team, how important it can be that you have somebody to guide you forward as Mohesi has done. And it's not like the two departing players from Mirage were bad by any measure. It's just that maybe the team needed something more than both Nyx and Marm brought to the squad. It's certainly based on results. Seems like these two new additions have been somewhat of that formula and have really helped Mirage find their footing. And again, while the scores won't reflect it because we did have a rehost, both Benji and Melted were playing far better than yeah. in previous stages and previous matches. And that has been a consistent thing for the four games, well, three so far in this fourth game for Mirage. Absolutely agree. And it's all about, again, coming together and, and agreeing on a play style. Because I feel like if you have half a team that wants to play the game, let's say, uh, structured, and then the other half wants to play like, aggressive and lose, well, you're not really ever going to be on the same page 100%. I mean, I used to say back when I was in, in, you know, in Penta, if I was in a one versus two situation, I'd rather play with Fabian than Junas because Fabian and I played the game the same way, whereas Junas and I, we had very different ideas. And it just seems to me, looking at this from top-down view, Mirage are on the same page about how they want to play the game. And you can argue that it's a better version, it's a weaker version, whatever, but the point is, it's five people coming together with the same vision, and that's always going to beat people being apart. So far, success is being found. SSG not really roaming on the master bedroom side of things, so an early injury here from Mirage can be enabled. They're gonna play for that top chimney, top loser's position, where last time, the utility from Mirage was excellent. Flash, <laughs> that changed your mind. Maybe not. It is absurd that you need to repel up that little thing, though. Yeah. Like, I mean, you're supposed to be some of the best counter-terrorist units in the entire world, and you can't just <laughs> climb up a ledge onto a roof? Like, come on. Mm. Yeah, they're wearing 50 pounds of tactical gear. Dude, I don't care. They pull steel beams out of their I knew behind. That was like, I it's, knew the that. realism doesn't exist. If you're a person crowing about realism in Rainbow Six, then I don't know what to tell you, man. Yeah, it's always anyway. the best argument. Where did the reinforcements come from? But yeah, the floor is here. Could actually be the key operator, because if you can clear out these shields without burning a ton of flashbangs and grenades, you have so much more utility to use elsewhere on the map. All these magnets you see in the ceiling, probably gonna be ADS in the floor, gate on the window as well. It's gonna burn so much time. But see, the one flashbang goes out, melted stone, and shield is gone. They can circumvent half the entire setup because of the, they're bringing the floors. Fultz just firing away from inside of library here. First casualty is Fultz. Barrage in prime position to get a couple more and win this whole thing. They got a minute to go to find the four players from it, SSG who are spread out all over the map. Yeti fires back though. Mirage not gonna have an easy time of it. SSG will put up a front and slow them down. Mirage now repositioning. And Space Station have seemingly all dropped off of that top floor. All right, so they've surrendered control and will now head closer to the bomb site. Consolidate and wait for the push to come from Mirage. What well, 35 seconds left? I mean, Mirage don't have that much they can do right now. You know, they can do a little bit of verticality maybe from this sledge, but I mean, the angles are oh so open. And it's just they kind of lock on the bomb side. Oh, Melted taking some serious damage as they tussle with Hot and Cold now on this hatch. He's got that high damage DMR. Benji, no. Kills oh, Kento. Exactly. So unideal. Now Dexter falls as well. This round looked good. Dexter gave them that opening, gave them the advantage, but it's been squandered as all of Mirage are walking into the oh. bullets. And now Melted has dropped, picks up a kill on the Rampy, but that's just for the Siege GG stats, nothing else. Space Station hangs on. Melted and LOL in the chat, and we might be far from over. Yeah, but it's also close every single round, and it comes down to the small details here. Whether you can break the initial hold or not, no member from Mirage was in the library balcony, so the members of SG were a little bit more free to run around the area and establish those crossfires. And Mo actually being the opening death now, two rounds in a row for Mirage, and it's not really necessarily a bad thing because in a bar attack, you don't need the Thermite anymore at that stage. You basically become an entry player. You've used your first extra Thermite charge early in the round, you've used your flashbangs, etc. You are basically a walking gun. And losing your IGL of Mo, probably not the end of the world. He can call better shots from the grave as he has more oversight, more overview in general. But they are, but essentially they are losing their mad advantage is what, what my point is. Where in the previous couple of rounds, once they applied pressure, they were never letting go. But as you see, they're fighting back. 6-3 and Master Bedroom is being brought out for the first time in this matchup so far. Hot and cold on the Warden, a stable operator for him. Rambi, of course, on the fast operator in the game of Oryx. 
Getting that 1.5 XT5 can really help you out in these rounds to get those kills. And if anything, I want to see Rambi take down Dexter because those two seem to always fight one another in these early openings. And well, it seems server for a match point round. And there was an instance in stage two, I believe, where SSG they were on match. It was like if they lose three rounds, they like they can't make the major, or a certain team can't make the major. And then that final round that mattered for them, they had a crash. They played four v five, and it sucked. So. As much as rehos are unfun to be a part of, and to watch, and to cast, and, and to everything else, I think in this particular instance it is so necessary because look at this. 6 3 in favor of Mirage would be a crazy upset against SSG. We're at match point. This round deserves to be played out in its fullest with all members available. That's what we're gonna do. We are back into it. Prep phase is about to end in two seconds' time. Mirage bringing the same stable lineup basically to every single attack so far. It's going to be the Lion, Buck, Thermite, Ayana, and Sledge. Again, they have all the tools they need. One thing they can change, Mo can go from flashbangs to smoke grenades on the Thermite. The rest typically stays the same. Yeti, just like the previous time around, is holding an angle on this window in case he hears a sound cue. So he opens up the window for a swing. Rush, they say, you know, we don't really care about that window right now. We're going to go upstairs and try and peel off library. It should have been over clear. Master bedroom defense, need I remind you? Early extension from Mr. They got a shield and a cross from Yeti. Last time, Mirage had an issue with clearing out Yeti's position of blue stairs. Got to fix that for this time. Oh, that's scary. Yeah, it was a bit of a jump scare for Yeti as the Gemini goes through library. Doesn't make it past the top of library stairs. Bosco is not too far away to support. A window into the soul is what they call the eyes, and Yeti will use both of those to look far deep towards the main stairs. So much action happening. This looks like a repeat of the first couple rounds, Nick, where it's just an all-out frenzy. And Space Station are greeting the aggression from Mirage head on. They will not be taken away from this position. There goes a grenade right next to Hot and Cold, and yet another as he oh. looks long range and gets the pick on to Dexter. Down he goes. Space Station start off the round with a pick. Looking for more as Kento advances, yet he taking some damage. And yeah, that is, Nate goes out, but it's not cooked, so Hardenko can make his moves around. It gets the cross again, established. Can't quite get the kill, though, as Mo finds one onto Bosco, but Yeti finds one to Kento as well as a trade back and forth. And so much damage is being done right now. SSG still with the advantage. Oh. Hot and Cold is just holding court upstairs, and everybody is having to listen to this sermon as he preaches the good word of Warden. Not for much longer, though. Melted, removing him from the server. There's an EU on Degon, still one remaining for Benji. Utility available for Mirage, should they need it. Skeleton key for Buck, basically at full. Got to be mindful of those frost mats, though, because Fultz has placed all three of them, and as the clock continues to work against you, you have to be concerned with where you're stepping. You won't necessarily have the time to look every single time you make a move in a certain direction. Yeah, but for the third time in a row, it's mowed down for the count again, so the wall cannot be opened up, and there's no secondary hot breach unmelted. So what do you have? You have three flashbangs to work with and a dream because you got to walk through double door piano, and it's not going to be, oh, a nice situation. Without smoke grenades, you got to just hope that they miss their shots and you hit yours. Rampy's waiting so patiently. Long range with that T5, a relatively easy gun to control. He lights up the buck of melted and then immediately heads down below for cover. Still in the same spot, nice shot from Benji. He knows the other's gonna push from over towards bathroom. Diffuser going down and now the clock starts to run. Rampy could get an easy pop up and he sees the head of Melted. Could he be the hero? Benji in a 1v2. Match on the line for Mirage, all three points there. Rampy on the diffuser. Benji knows this, he has to hurry. Where's the cross? He gets swung on by Fultz holding the position. Space Station putting together a nice streak. They've won three in a row and Mirage might be in trouble. Yeah, and this is the thing, when you're so close to winning, when the pressure is at its highest, that's where the experience of SSG really shines. And, I mean, Mirage, they just need that one more round, a few more kills to go their favor, one opening kill, one clutch, one situation where they find themselves the victor. They have called for a tactical timeout now, and this is where things are going to get a bit dire. You've had two tech issues, now a tactical timeout. Both teams get to talk with their coach. The Lycan might have something to tell SSG's players as well. Two more rounds, then we will enter overtime. We basically need things to happen right now, right here for Mirage, and get back into this game. Good news is they have guaranteed overtime at the very least, which is one point, but also they have more rounds to go if they get there.
It's the benefit of having your team fall apart or having your opponents fall apart <laughs> earlier on is that you can then use your timeout. But it does bring Space Station back into the game. It does. I actually talked to Lycan after one of the matchups on the last stage, and I said, why didn't you call a timeout when your team was getting the stuffing beat out of them? And he said, because I thought that what we needed to fix was obvious mm. and that I didn't need to talk to the team. But if I called a timeout, it also allows our opponents to talk. And that becomes a problem because then they can strategize. Yeah. Then they can get their heads back in the game. Or even if they're not in the game and they're winning, then they can use that potentially to come up with a good pocket strat and to stop us in our tracks. Oh, you're right. It's easy to think that a tactical timer is always going to benefit you the most, but it really isn't always the case. Now we see another kitchen defense here from Space Station. Mirage, operator-wise, they're staying to their guns. It's all the same as before. So that technical timeout is, is gotta be related to either execution or initial entry points. Maybe a weakness was spotted out. Maybe a pocket strap was coordinated. Either way, similar stories right now. Hot and Cold has been a big problem in the last three rounds. He's been holding the ground for Space Station, finding kills and buying so much time. And as you see, playing very nicely around him. Yeti usually is his duo. He's there to assist him. If Mirage can clear out this chimney position that Hot and Cold is in, that's going to be how they can start this round with a win. Thirty seconds off of the clock. Can the timeout work? SSG didn't have success. They lost the three rounds that followed them calling a timeout, but now it seems like we are in a very defender-sided chalet. The attacking teams have only won a single round apiece. SSG's came in round number three. Mirage did it in the very first round of their attack, which is good because it gives them so much time to just simply win another based on site selection. But SSG seems to be hitting their shots. Yeti takes down Melted before being traded out. Neither team really gains any. Thing. Oh. But then there goes Kento to Fultz. Space Station roaming as effectively as Mirage did in the first half. And you can tell that Mirage are not droning it out effectively. And despite having seven drones at their disposal, it's not simply enough. There's plenty of time, though. Half of the round to go for Mirage to find their footing as Benji now suffers a bit of damage. SSG having one player on the field more than Mirage could be huge, but now it's gone. Bolts down by Mohesi and finished off on Library Stairs. And most alive, that's a big thing right now because he's been dead the last three attacking rounds as the second member of the team. Hot and cold hiding near the double window to office and they have not joined him out successfully. Hot and cold right here could, e could easily get one or two kills. He's biding his time and waiting. He has no reason to move right now. He's been misdrawn twice. He knows this. There's no intel to be gathered. But Mo is up. Wall gets opened up. Hot and cold. There's no way you just said no intel to be gathered when you hear the cool mines going off. Hot and cold gets two. But that's all he gets. It's now Dexter in a 1v2. What a play and a leap of faith by hot and cold. Can Dexter do much with these 40 seconds? Three points again for Mirage. But Dexter needs to bounce that nade effectively. He knows somebody is over there. Here's the suppressor going off. Gets impacted. Waiting for the pop-up. He'll toss a grenade just to try and dislodge the alibi, but boss goes better. We're going all 12 rounds. Woo. We cast or cursed it in the first half. We said, oh, this isn't that competitive a match. It's 5-1 Mirage. They're storming through this. This one's over. Well, guess what? Space Station are preventing Mirage from going quietly into that good night. They are, and now all the pressure really comes to this round, and then the pressure kind of goes away again. That's funny how that works, because once you go to OT, I feel like Mirage will get a sigh of relief for that. Like, okay, we messed up the first half here, but now we're resetting. Now we're playing basically three rounds in a row. I don't know. But right now, they still have that pressure that they can win in regulation. And they feel like they're probably choking right now. Rounds are not going their favor. Small issues are occurring. Their executions have been quite predictable. They've been trying to essentially do the same exact attack three times in a row. Because the way they've been attacking against both the bar, sorry, the kitchen and master bedroom attack is similar. Because the way that she holds those bomb sites are similar as well. And I feel like Mirage really wish they had the nuke available right now to just go in the basement, walk up a staircase, and get a kill somewhere. I feel like that's the only criticism from Mirage right now is that they're very linear in their attacking style. It is quite easy to read. And SSG is a seasoned veteran team. 
They do not struggle against that. Here's the ultimate heartbreak scenario for Space Station, though, is that Mirage wins this round and SSG's comeback. Four rounds in a row, looking great. Significantly better than the first half. And yet it was all for naught, because if they lose here yeah. and Mirage wins 7-5, nary a point for Space Station to be found. So Mirage would walk away with everything. The keys to the three-point castle. Can it happen? This is the big challenge for a newer team as well. And for somebody like Mohesi, who's guiding a team forward at this level, is you're up against experienced competition who yeah. know how to play from behind. They know how to keep their head in the game. And they know how to eke out a victory against hardened opponents. The newer teams, the more inexperienced rosters, the more inexperienced IGLs, they're the teams that are often struggling in this position. And being able to keep that mental composure sometimes can be a massive challenge. Timeout that was called by Mirage did not result in an immediate benefit that we could see. Will it pay dividends now, or will it also help them in overtime? Mind you that because Mirage hit those six rounds, SSG cannot get the full three points here, which is obviously unideal given the fact that they are in eighth place, but first and eighth are actually quite close to one another. So picking yeah. up even two points for SSG would help propel them up the standings. Every point really does matter early on in the stage because so many things can happen throughout. The Terra Drone goes in, kind of jumps back and forward, but there, oh, <laughs> somehow gets the shield regardless. It worked. Value. It definitely worked. Wall got opened up by Mo as well, so he's now a free gun to rain as well. Surprised there's no smoke grenades from Mo to help these lines of sides and kind of enable his injuries to take a more confrontational gunfight single-handedly in a 1v1 position. But we've seen this many times before, Parker. It's the blue chimney hold against the office push. Let's see what happens. Yet he's been in the same spot for so long. Mirage oh. want these engagements, but Kento misses. He has to fear a follow-up from Yeti. Dexter, who was so strong at the onset, is not where he needs to be. And he's down for the count. That leaves just Melted and Benji still up. Space Station in a 5v3, but basically a 5v2, unless somebody can get to Dexter. That all but secures overtime, unless something goes horrifically awry for SSG. This is a team that's been in this position so many times before. Mirage had a lead. They didn't really know what to do with it, and they've fallen apart at the seams. And I was actually going to credit how good their utility work had been. Clearing out the shield, taking charge of Balcony, but then they couldn't hit their shots, and they got swung on. But it's an ego peak from Hot and Cold. Dexter gets brought back to life. Things are not as grim for Mirage as they were seconds before, but still don't look very good. That leaves us 20 seconds left. Yeti not shaken off of library stairs. Back to the bomb site he goes. And down goes Benji now. Fultz with two. They run right into him. Melted in a 1v4. We go to overtime. And yep. Yeti says, we're going to take a point apiece. The comeback is so real. Space Station take five in a row, and we're going to overtime. Yeah, I think you said it perfectly, Parker. The utility clear from Mirage is superb, but the issue is that's not all you need. I mean, sure, you can destroy the shield, but Yeti, he's still on that blue staircase. He gets grenaded, it's uncooked, he swings up aggressively and gets two kills with none of, nobody looking in his direction. And again, I really think SSG's experience right now is just the big difference maker. Mirage doing the same attack over and over and over again. And they're expecting a different result, which we know that saying that is basically insanity. Nothing was really changed the round was SSG. They made these micro adjustments, right? The first time Yeti played passively on blue stairs. The second time he got grenaded. The third time he swings aggressively. Hot and cold to be the only stable player who does the exact same thing every time. That's because he always gets away with it as well. He's yet to be punished on that chimney position. And what do you know? SSG, they have overtime defense. And they're going to go kitchen. They're going to do the same hold with the same play in the same positions, and then Mirage, they should, in theory, go for a completely different attack. Mo is going from Thermite onto Hibana, and Melted from Flores onto Box. So this is signifying that Mirage are going to change things up. The question is, how? And if you look at just the trend line of this matchup, the fact that Space Station is on a defense, is on defense for two rounds is huge. Yeah, massive. Absolutely massive. I mean, you can swap up the roles as much as you'd like, but you've got the favorable side. Only two of 12 rounds breaking in favor of the attackers is not what fans of Mirage want to see one bit, but that's the reality of the matter, and that's the fact of the matter and the reality of the situation. I smashed the idioms, I did it again. <laughs> Either way, 30 seconds off of the clock. Space Station have changed up their own way of holding this bomb site. Yeti no longer at the top of library stairs. Instead, he's over by bathroom. He's got those Kiba barriers set up by the Azami of hot and cold. 
And now the Magnets will go out as well. Yeti had a very bad start after the rehost. Yeti has done exceptionally well. The opposite for Dexter. He was as hot as could be, and Yeti is going to continue to keep heating up. He's getting pressured from multiple angles, sees the grenade go down, needs to be wary of the bathroom window. The Tracers will give away the position of yet another towards Solarium. It's Dexter up there. He'll engage with Rampy, but has to also be wary of Yeti swinging. This is a mess for both of these teams. But Rampy continues to persist, and down goes Mohesi. Suddenly, Space Station have just broken this one open, and could it be flawless? No, Dexter says not this time. Four more for SSG, though. One more for Mirage. Dexter holding out the same position. The onus is on him to get to the bomb site. He's on such limited HP, he's not gonna be able to get the diffuser down. There's no way, a snowball's chance in hell. Attackers have recovered their so he has to go for kills. He has no HP. One bullet, he's out. Yeti, of course, in half, he held his ground really well in the bathroom, got the opening kill. No real follow-up from Mirage in that entry, essentially, or initially, rather. And those keeper barriers are really good at helping out those anchor positions. And of course, SSG, they can, they can run around, they can sit tight, they can hide in the corner. It doesn't really matter because Dexter, he might go for the tactical timeout without taking the tactical timeout. I think that's the, the, think that's the play. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the play right here. If I'm Dexter, uh, the winning this 1v4 is definitely doable. Look at the HP of the players on SSG. But for a team that is resilient as they are, they're just going to stay in position. They're going to hold their crossfires. They're going to make it nigh impossible mm -hmm. for him to be able to do anything with it. So you might as well just waste time. Allow the rest of your team to talk and figure out what's going to happen for your next defense. Because if you look at the way that this overtime breaks down, the defenders are expected to win pretty much every time. Mirage will go to defense in 20 seconds. They should win that round. Catastrophic results if they don't win that round because then they end up losing the entire matchup. Oh. And I mean, it looks like he definitely did take his time. Rambi gets the kill. That is six rounds in a row for Space Station. Now they sit on match point. That they do. And it all comes down to this. Which bomb side do we choose? To freshen up the memory, when Mirage was on defense, they played basement twice, and it was the only bombs that they lost a single time. That's the first time around. So basement is probably not going to be the answer. Bar currently being hovered by the members of them, of Mirage, that is. And that does seem to be the most favorable bomb side for both of these teams so far. Both Attack teams struggling with the same attack and defense. Just goes to show that it's very difficult to pull apart. Of course, Asami being open is a rarity on Shelley, and it's because the library becomes so much easier to hold because of those keeper barriers. The nine lines of sight, establishing crossfires, and making it harder for the attackers to get an easier kill on towards those members that are so important to clear. Normally, Asami is banned, not this time around, and this is the price you pay. Well, I've started to see more and more Asami being played by both these teams and how critical those Kiba barriers are at keeping you safe. Explosives have actually been at a minimum. We haven't seen a lot of Zofia play. We've seen a lot of Flores, yes, but ultimately the grenades that have been brought have been in the hands of Sledge. Yep. Donna's been a staple of Space Station. Operators are locked in. Space Station, despite taking their time out, have put together a very impressive body of work and are now a single round away from getting two points and keeping themselves in the hunt. It certainly looked like when it was a 6-1 scoreline that Mirage was going to be able to walk away, skate away since they're Canadian, well, the Orcas, with all three points, but SSG did not make it easy. And now Space Station's resilience is really showing, again, why this team is a world-class and world championship caliber team. Defenders are in a great position. Mirage should, in theory, based on the way that this map is played, win this round. That would set us up for all 15, which could be heartbreaking for Mirage to be 6-1, and ultimately, if they end up losing that round, lose 8-7, that would be debilitating. But again, they're a younger team trying to find their composure and trying to stay calm in the face of adversity is a significant challenge that just simply has to be taught with time. It is. I mean, going the distance with SSG is not a loss in itself at all. I mean, they still get that one point at least, but a good start here actually for Mirage because the member, the Kento who's playing inside the library gets out and alive with full HP, four stars like grenade, flashback, etc. But Kento taking damage from fireplace into towards the bomb side. Well, he's got that one soft wall inside of the back of bar, so Needs to be wary of any lobby presence from Space Station. They're still trying to flush out somebody from upstairs in the library, but they can't quite do it. Hot and cold dies to Benji. The roam with the DMR in hand is too much. Kento suffered a lot of damage, but he is still alive. 
That is true. He can wait. No real opportunity to heal him back up. Present. Thunderbird has disappeared from the chalet meta. I think Azami is honestly what has forced her out for a lot of teams, taking that flex position. And speaking of Azami, melted now by Chimney, losing some cover. Yeti creeping upstairs. If they don't see from the cam inside of lobby, Yeti is free and clear to put in a clinic as there's two separate players from Mirage that could be his for the taking. But look at that, he's just in the middle of the bomb site. Yeti decides to take control himself. He sees an opening, cannot connect onto the Jaeger, but does so, both kills are his. Melted is gone as well. It's a clean sweep from Space Station as the diffuser goes down. And Benji, the only one to get a kill so far this round, will need to get more, he can't. Fultz gets the kill and Space Station wins every round that they need to put this one away. Goodness gracious. 8-6. It was 6-1 for Mirage. Seven rounds in a row for SSG. And they take the win. Did you see Yeti stormed over to fist bump his opponents before celebrating with his team? He was there instantaneously, by the way. Oh my He's God. at the edge of the stage, too. Oh my God. That last attack as well, by the way, from Space Station is superb. That's exactly the kind of thing that I wish Mirage was gonna do, where like you try and go library, it looks like a default take, what do you know? You full sent off basement stairs because there's no Banshee there, into side, you get both openings and every single member of Space Station was so ready for it. One member on that library repel and then that was it. That was it. And you can see there's some smiles on both teams. Obviously, SSG relieved with that matchup, but Mirage so close yet so far. For a team that has overperformed a lot of the community's expectations, I would still be proud of this result, yeah. even if you didn't put a win down.